Aloha. Daniel and Lucy here. <laughs> I know it's silly. Um, we have a friend of ours who asked us a question yes. about marriage. And um, I think it's important to have this conversation because I feel like there's a lot of marriages that need this tip or advice or I would say insight. Um, by no means do we say we arrived and we got it all, but mm -hmm. we have been married here 20 years here in August and we have seven children. Mm -hmm. And so if we've been pressed, if we haven't been pressed yet, yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, it's, there's just been a lot of stuff, a lot of moving parts in our family. So, uh, the question, the question, the question is, mm -hmm. it's a pretty loaded question though. Um, are there, you get a bug there? Yep. Are there specific roles in marriage, specifically Christian marriage, um, for husband and wife? Like these are the roles. This is what husbands do. These are, this is what wives do. Does that exist in marriage? And the short answer is yes. All the above, yeah, no. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> yes, right. no. That's the short answer. Yeah. It's such a loaded question, but um, yes and no. So uh, we were approached with this question and asking how do we navigate through marriage being um, Christians and also the question uh, was pertaining to specifically the Latin culture as well. So mm -hmm. being Latin and Christian, being Puerto Ricans, that's just a whole nother culture. So we're going to try to answer this question, dive a little deeper. Um, yeah, but I think too, it, it, this applies to any culture. Right, right. right. Um, I think too, uh, to, before we can answer the question, we can we have to first um, point out the perception or the the process of how it used to be mm -hmm. right because um the bible is true as far as what we do we believe right and so yes back in the day i would say maybe 150 years ago 100 years ago and before uh, when you had children when a woman would have children then the whole community will raise that child will, will help or they would have a helper um they would have um you know servants um, you know, and, and this is not talking about slavery because even before then, like it was a culture of just a community helping each other out. Right. Um, and so, um, it was very easy to give a lot of responsibility about the house chores, cooking dinner, making sure the kids had outfits, right? They sewed things, you know, and even the kids at the time, they had to take more responsibilities at an early age, you know, and still to this day, there's, you know, a lot of countries where kids at four years old, five years old are out there farming and doing stuff with the father, right? If they're, right. Uh, if they're boys. And so even in the, um, in the kids, the kids helped or were more proactive you know, there's kids that are 15 and 16 years old that don't know how to wash dishes or even wash their own clothes. You know, and that's shame. just our culture. I mean, it's a shame, but you know, if that's you, probably say, well, that's me. You know, well, it's just a, a different, it's a different, um, different lifestyle, right? You know, how you raise your kid, we're not gonna say how you raise your kid, but that's the Western culture now where kids, they don't even know how to tie their shoe half, you know, most of the times nowadays, you know, because we just, as parents, do everything for them. Uh, but my point is, as a woman, they had more responsibilities when it came to the house mm -hmm. than the man. The man, back in the day, had to go hunt, had to go work, do manual labor, go farm, go harvest the fields, go work, you know, the fields, go, you know, whatever it is, men had more manual labor. So when they came home, they were exhausted and tired for being outside doing whatever. So then the woman will then cook for them, obviously. But it did not, I don't think, ever, ever made the men disrespect or dishonor or treat the woman differently. In fact, I think men really treated women with respect and honor. Uh, you know, I remember there was a time where when a woman come into a room, the man will stand up oh, to yeah. show respect, right? That's not happening anymore. <laughs> it doesn't happen anymore, right? The opening the door, the, you know, the, the, the honor and respect and really, you know. So anyway, so my point is before I move on, back in the day when you talk about the Bible, and how the Bible says, you know, the woman is to be the helper for the man, right? The man needs a helper and the woman was there to help the man, not do it all, to help. Then I think back in the day, um, it was it was it was easy 
you know, way to look at it and say, yeah, the woman takes care of the house because the man's outside in the field. It was easy. But now in our Western society, the woman's working, the man's working, or vice versa, or only one, it looks different, right? Military, non-military. Um, and so that's kind of how we want to address it. So I wanted to kind of give that backdrop that yes, our culture has shifted away from that. And I think that was a perfect order because there's a lot of good and a lot of you know, people, kids being raised properly, I think, um, mm -hmm. with, with strong values and strong um, you know, abilities, if you will, from that time. And so that perfect order, how God created it, I think was beautiful. And I think it could still be beautiful today, but it just looks different. So that's what we're going to talk about right now is now so that's the backdrop. So how in 2020 do we do it, Lucy? This is how <laughs> we do it. Um, so I wanted to just start out with scripture. Um, first of all, of course, there's scripture in Genesis in the very beginning. God creates Adam and God says it is not good for man to be alone. So he creates Eve um, to be his helpmate. Um, to be his helper and so we can see that as as um, you know women are supposed to be um, created just for man and like there's no other purpose not true whatsoever um, helper does not mean slave <laughs> Just want to make that clear. But I do want to go over into Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5, um, looking at verse 22. It starts with, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. And I feel like that scripture has been taken out of context <laughs> so submit much. Submit, woman! <laughs> the Bible says it. Submit, woman. So much so to the point that women hear that word and it's like, I know oh. you did it. Yeah, it's like we, it's like the S word. Yeah. No, um, the Christian and, S word. Right, the Christian Submit. S word. <laughs> but you know, I I used to hate that word and I've come to truly embrace it and understand it now. If we look at Ephesians five twenty one, right before the address to husbands and wives. Ephesians 5 21 it says submit to one another out of reverence or out of fear for the Lord out of reverence for God so mm -hmm. we're supposed to submit to one another then it goes on okay so wives this is how it looks like for you to submit so now there's just okay being addressed let's look at the wives first so wives submit to your own husband as to the Lord for the husband is the head of of the wife as Christ is the head of the church just like Christ is the head of the church okay um, and he is the Savior of the body speaking of Jesus so we have we have an order everything that God does is always in order so we have God we have Christ as the head then we have man or husband as head of the household mm -hmm. and then it goes wives and then there's children right um, but I just love the comparison here that the same way that Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body of the whole body of believers that's what husbands are being referred to as head over their households and that's not that doesn't just mean wives it means when you have children as well like you were the head over the household and I don't know about about you but that's a pretty heavy yoke to yeah, it's a, it's a, right it's a big responsibility right I think you know when you think about it and I think that's why um, you know the Bible says that you know women are to submit to husbands because the man the weight is food on the table right um, uh, responsibility of protection back in the day you know we have the police now you know we have you know um, you know people who, who help with the law but back in the day you were the police <laughs> you know <laughs> right. someone comes to your, your your land or your house you were the one having to to, to, to protect your family if there's a, a wolf or a bear or a lion you know in Africa you know you're you're gonna get jacked up if a man does it right and so and so you better you, know, you had a big responsibility to protect your family right, right? Um, and so I think um, you know so so but we're now we're not doing that right we're not a lot of manual labor we're not you know for the most part uh, you know we're not doing those type of things and so 
it looks kind of silly. Like, well, I got to submit to him. He don't do a dang thing. You know, he just works a cubicle <laughs> job and then comes home and like, oh, honey, I'm tired. And we go watch TV, right? It ain't like the it, back in the day, right? So right. why am I submitting, you know? <laughs> what is he doing so hard that I have to submit? You know, but, 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 but let's look at it differently now, right? Uh, I think, too, what I love is, is he addresses, you know, submit to each other. And then he's like, you, you read beautifully there of why submit. But then it says to, for a husband to, to, to love your, your wife. Hold on, let's go there. Oh, we haven't went there yet. We haven't gone oh, there. Okay. Hold yeah, on. Yeah. So I'll finish up the wives portion. So therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So we're supposed to trust them be submissive to their decisions to their leadership to their guidance to their wisdom um you know for men they have such a great instinct when something is dangerous when something is um like in, in nowadays it's like it's not the bears and the wolves but it's like you know what that's a bad business deal right. um we shouldn't move there like that's not a safe part of town that's not the place we need to be or you know they have that intuition, um, intuition yeah. to protect and so we are to then yield to their decision making as the head of the household now moving on to husbands now let me see that was verse 22 23 and 24 three verses on what the wives need to do let's look at the husbands there's a lot more verses for the husbands husbands love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word and that he might present her to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Well, <laughs> well, you know, um, so <laughs> like I said, now let's, let's look at that, right? When we're all like, yeah, you know, you know, why submit to husbands? Then we get the greater call, which is to die for our wives. What does that look like practically? Right? I mean, obviously, you know, okay, Daniel, what does that even mean? To die for our wives, which obviously I'm growing into it always, you know, never right. But it's like when you're in you're argument, right, right. <laughs> when you're in arguments or disagreements, like are you trying to prove your point to be right or are you allowing your wife to say, you know what? Yeah, we can do that, right? If it's not really going to be life or death and it's not really going to you know, break anything, can you submit submit to the point where you're you're laying your life down? Jesus laid his life down. They didn't take his life. They laid his, he laid his life down, which is mm -hmm. meekness. He had the power to literally take care of everybody out. But he says, I'm gonna lay my life down. So, man, I'm gonna lay my life down for Lucy. Man, I'm gonna lay my life down. Lucy needs some time alone. Or Lucy needs, you know, away from the kids, or Lucy needs this, or Lucy needs that. Whatever it is, am I laying my life down? putting her needs above mine that's at the end of the day it's right. putting her needs you know i love to play golf but if a time where if i go play golf is going to infringe in her ability to have her time then forget golf i'm going to allow her to have her time if it's whatever it is if it's man like i'm coming home and i can see that lucy has an exhausted day and it was her turn to do dinner i'm going to go do dinner i'm going to go fix it because i can discern man she had a hard day it's serving my wife Jesus serve the church I didn't come to be served but to serve so wives may be submitting but men are to serve is to te is to treat our women like princesses like like the Bible says to without blemish without fault to to baptize her with the Word of God what does it look like is to to proclaim and speak life of her right not oh you suck here you do this you do that you don't do this you don't do that is man I love when you do this um, man your hair looks beautiful man your skin looks awesome <laughs> man your outfit or <laughs> or man thank you so much for watching the kids today or thank you so yeah. much for working today thank you so much for working today coming home showering you know giving the kids um, you know baths and also cooking like it's edifying your bride 
right? Is right. encouraging her. That's what it means to water her with the word is to encourage her speaking life into her. And if, man, my wife don't, you know, she don't do none of that. Well, then speak it over her. Pray over her. Right. right? Don't hold her up to that without blemish. Then you're, you're pointing the finger. You're casting stones among your wife. And you're not going to see change. And so the man has a greater responsibility to serve his wife. And if you do it properly, if the wife does this properly and we do it properly, then the wife is going to want to submit to you. Right. Because you treat her that way. I mean, I'll let you speak on that. Like, if I treat you in a certain way, where I'm, when I'm treating you like a princess, I'm treating you with respect and honoring without blemish, like, you know, what, what does that make you feel as a response? Man, I know that when I feel loved and I feel like I'm being treated like a princess, it, it makes me want to give more pour out more it makes me want to serve more in turn and I know that we don't you know we I'm not saying that you should do this in order to get that we're to serve no matter what you know and by the way marriage is not 50 50 right like, uh, it's not you give 50 and I give 50 it's 100 100 and that is the only way that marriage will work is you have to give your all you have to do your best regardless of the other person is putting in their effort like you have to continue to give your 100 percent um whoever came up with 50 50 is te that's, that's terrible horrible. terrible marriage is 100 100 and it is hard it i mean i so get hard i get at a macro level of what that kind what they're trying to say but at the end of the day it's really 100 it's 100 no matter what because then it's 50 50 is love seek his own and that's right. what she's saying it's like love does not seek its own. And if you truly, sorry, there's a gnat in here. If you truly love your wife, then you're gonna give 100% if she does her part or not, right? And so, yeah, the it's like, you know, if I sow a seed, an apple seed, right? I'm gonna get an apple tree, right? And so if I love my wife, I treat my wife and I serve her, right? The byproduct should be that she will submit. But it's not a submit as in a coward or a slave. It's submit as in, a, 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 it's an honor. It's an honor to submit to your will and what it is that God's leading you to do Here's for our family. Here's the thing too, like with submit, and this is this is where I started to really love that I get to submit, is when there are really hard decisions to make <laughs> in our marriage, in our family, on like what's the next step, and I get to step back and go, it's up to you. <laughs> yeah, right. That's your choice. And the pressure's off. Right. And I think that that is so amazing how God designed women that way that we don't have to have the pressure of decisions that are so weighty. Yeah. And that we get to pass that to our husbands. We don't have to worry about it. Like, I don't worry about finances. And I'm not saying that now because we're doing well i have not worried about finances for a very long time even when we were not doing well because i knew ultimately god's my provider Amen. god is our provider and you know what the lord's going to open doors for him that are going to benefit us and what's not going to benefit us the lord is going to close those doors and if there's deals coming and clients coming he's going to know what to do with those um, and I just, I don't worry about it. And I'm like, God, I'm so glad that I can just sit back and not have to worry about the finances. That's just one right, aspect it's like I'm of submitting, it. But... Like we don't, we think submit of like, you know, backing up. It's also submitting as in like, that's that I'm trusting you. Like submit can also be, I am trusting you right. to make those decisions. I am trusting you to go work. I am trusting you to take care of whatever responsibility is. I'm submitting to you on what it is that you're responsible for, right? And and so that's more, I think, too, or another facet of submitting. Um, it's just trusting um, that your husband is going to be able to do what it is that he's going to do. Right. And if he's not, then we need to, then you, that's a different topic. We need to work on it, right? But if you if you function according to the scriptures in the way this is telling you, then it's going to it's going to work. 
and it's, and it's going to get better, right? Um, and so I think um, the submitting part is definitely 100, 100. And I think too, mm -hmm. I think too, what's very important, it looks different for everyone. One of the worst things, one of the worst things you can do in marriage is compare your spouse with somebody else. Oh, yeah. Worst thing you can do. Don't do it. <laughs> it's going to create resentment towards that other person, right? And it's going to create all kinds of unhealthy relationships. I don't care who they are. Don't compare someone to another. If you could be just like this. Now, it's different if that person, if I says, man, like, I, I think, like, my best friend, you know, Kenyon, like, there's things I like, I said, babe, man, I, I need to learn from Kenyon because he, he actually helped me in my marriage in the beginning of, like, having, how, how to buy flowers for my wife. I never, I, I hated flowers and all that. Like, he taught me that stuff, right? You know, and, and so, and, you know, we glean from each other. Right. So my point is, it's different if I'm seeing it as an invitation to do better. But if I said, man, babe, you should be more like homegirl because she does this and this, then that's horrible. Because you're killing her her uh, insecurity. I mean, she's super insecure, so you're killing her confidence, right? right? And it's creating a barrier towards that person, and that person doesn't even know that you're comparing, and then now Lucy's resent, resentful towards that person, like, my husband likes that person more than me in that situation or that area, right? So it's, it's, it's just all wrong, right? The person you should be comparing your spouse to is Jesus, right? And that is one mark that it's gonna be, right? obviously, impossible to reach yeah. but i uh, finished with that i'll let you go uh but plus i mean but i think comparing it to jesus but then having steps to get there is a lot different yeah right so um i was just going to finish up that you know I, I said that there were three three verses for the wives there's a lot more for the, the husbands so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies he who loves his wife loves himself for no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church um, you know I think that's super important as for husbands as they are treating their wives it's like wait a minute would I want to treat myself like this because if the answer is no then I shouldn't be treating her like this right. um, that's a good check right there verse 30 for we are members of his of his body of Christ of his flesh and of his bones for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh uh, this is a great mystery but I speak concerning Christ and the church nevertheless let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband um, you know there's a lot in there and I feel like I feel like we could do a hundred marriage videos and still not even cover everything that there is to cover about marriage mm -hmm. um, but in, I, I wanted to go specifically to the question that came as far as like the roles so we, we've talked about how you submit to one another the um, the cherishing one another that's those are the biblical roles there husbands are to die mm -hmm. wives are to submit if there's any wives out there that feel like we have the shorter end of the stick, they have a harder, <laughs> more weightier responsibility. Um, and I'm super thankful. <laughs> so thankful for that. Um, but. I wanted to get to then the actual roles, yeah, like the, practic the, the practical, you know, the question that we received, you know, went into detail of like, what are the women supposed to do? And, you know, is it wash the dishes and men aren't supposed to do that? And men are supposed to take care of the yard work and women shouldn't do that. Um, I think there's, there's not a cookie cutter mm -hmm. answer for that. That's going to fit really nice in a box. Um, every marriage is different. Every season of life is different in marriages. There's there's couples with kids, no kids, how many kids, like that makes a difference on what the roles are. Um, so maybe principles is better than than actual, like, this is how we do it. Right, you know? right. And so it's kind of like, um, you know, a principle would be, okay, every quarter we examine our marriage. So, okay, you know, what are we, you know, if something's not, gelling together like you know what's changed in our in our season that's creating conflict and then you assess it well this is creating conflict so then responsibilities change based off of that conflict mm -hmm. um you know and so like right now lucy 
has to prepare for her homeschooling and do a lot of curriculum stuff and just get things in order. And so I have to help out and watch the kids more in certain times, not all the time, but more because she needs the time to do that. So I could say, no, no, that's your responsibility. You figure it out, figure it out. Or I can say, you know what? That's creating tension and conflict in our family because she's getting frustrated with not being able to have time to get it done. So therefore now I have to take some responsibility. So it, it just, it's, it's always different, right? And so you have to be able to discern and have opportunities to speak to each other or what bothers you or responsibilities not communicated is not an expectation or shouldn't be an expectation. So if I don't ever tell her to do something, I can't expect her to do it. You have to communicate it, right? And so you have to allow yourself to have not argument sessions, but time right. to say, look, this is not working in our marriage or in our workflow, right, of our family, our Hana. So let's address this and what is a solution, right? And then that way, the principle is doing that. What it actually is, because Lucy stays at home and I work, that looks different, right? I, I sometimes work from home and sometimes go to my office. And then, so I can't tell you what we do because it's gonna be different, right? So for us, the principle is communicate. Yes. Communicate what are the problems and then give solutions to those problems, right? What's gonna work better for both parties to do 100% and 100%, right? right? Or the picking up someone for school, dropping them off. If it's whatever it is, find that, right? And communicate that and readdress it quarterly or seasonal because it changes, right? Right. Um, and our roles have changed throughout our marriage. Yeah. I mean, like Danny said, we'll, we'll be married 20 years this August. And in the beginning, like the first seven years, we didn't have kids. And so the roles looked different. He was still going to school and working full time, full time school, full time working. He had like um, night to, a night job, night job right? right? And so school during the morning, the morning time and then went to work at night. Right. And then I had like an early morning job. It's just anyway, it was just our roles were different and that that was okay and then kids started coming and it was like okay wait we've got to readjust this how do we change roles and um, in the beginning of having kids I went back to work after having kids Danny was working at home so he was a stay-at-home dad for a couple of years while I went to work right. um, so he could work from home and he was watching um, Jedediah it was Jedediah right so he was watching Jedediah and then you know and then after a couple kids, then I decided to stay home and not work anymore. So then the roles change again. And then it's a matter of, well, who's going to, who's going to take care of breakfast, lunch, dinner during these seasons. And I know it sounds so silly, but sit down with your spouse and go through all of the different responsibilities. Who should do the trash? Who should take, who should be responsible for taking out the trash? Who should be responsible for breakfast and for lunch and for dinner? You know, if, if the wife, bath time, I mean, that yeah, was, bath know. time, that was a whole nother thing. If the wife is a nurse and she's working graveyard shifts, that would not really be conducive to the marriage to expect the wife to still have dinner ready right. when husband comes home from work because she's gone. Right. You know, so it's like it's it's those things of like what's what's working in our marriage. What are what is the season like, um, and how can we work together to help our marriage function properly? All right. And back in yeah. the day, those weren't problems because number one, there was no electricity, so when it was dark, he couldn't work. Everyone was at home. There was right. a joint effort, right? And so. These are all problems that we have in our society because of culture and advance of technology. And so we have all kinds of problems in marriages because of all these, you know, it's not normal the way we live now. Uh, and so specifically to Latinos, Latinos, we, you know, as men, we're very old school, right? We were brought up old school in a sense that you sit down at the table, the wife cooks, the wife takes care of the house, the wife cleans, the wife does everything at the house and all the man does is go work and then brings them the money and and also the also the, the, the husband will discipline the kids make sure that you know he, he was the hammer the black man was the hammer when he came home right? right and so and so coming in as a latin back you know my dad was not that way you know so my dad did not teach me that way um you know and so it was different you know and i think a lot of the way i treat my wife was because my dad was a great example of that so th dad thank you for that 
you know, um, and so, um, and so for me as a Latin, a Latin man, right? I don't, I didn't embrace that culture, but that culture specific to the question my friend said is, yeah, that culture is that, but it, that's not right. That's not the way it works, right? That is not, there's some half truth in that when it comes to the Bible, maybe. Um, but in this culture, you know, it, it doesn't work, right? It does not work in a Western right. society. Um, you're going to, um, it, 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 it's going to create so much burden and so much pressure on the wife to do those things the way it was back then. Uh, because again, Western culture, we're working all around the clock. There's a electricity. We can be out and still doing things. So just throw that out the window and go with the principles. I know this video is long, 30 minutes, but uh, like Lucy said, we can go hours and hours on this. The principle is meet together. How does it work? You know, no kids, with kids. How do our or how does our fam family dynamic work with what's your responsibilities and what's my responsibilities? Mm -hmm. And stay true to that. Hold each other accountable to that. And allow each other to say, hey, you know, you said you're going to do that, but you're not doing it, right? And not see it as an attack, but more as a, you know, hey, I'm holding you accountable. But you can't say, you don't do that anymore, right? Because then you, 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 you know, you got to do it with love, right? Um, and then furthermore, I, I think we'll close with this. I think we take this you know in Ephesians we take this but you take first Corinthians 13 mm -hmm. right take the that love chapter the love chapter right take that yeah. with this yeah if you take that with this and you bring it to every conversation right then it's going to allow for growth in your marriage and a closeness this oneness the Bible says as one come as one flesh then you start to operate as one flesh not as you do this and I do this it becomes we together as one do this right when you get there with first Corinthians 13 love chapter right the all what love is then you've gone closer to what I feel like God's created for a marriage, right. right? And so if love seeks its own, then you're gonna want, hey, you're gonna serve, you're gonna make my food. But if love does not seek your own, is it better that you cook dinner or is it better that I cook dinner? That's love not seeking its own. Yeah. Not, you're called to cook dinner because the Bible says you need to submit and you need to take care of the, the house stuff. Because the Bible doesn't even say that part though. All right? It's submit to each other, it's serve each other, it's yeah. love doesn't seek its own. So what responsibilities is it you with love not seeking his own right, right? and so if, if if we can just as as married couples focus each individual on the lord and seeking the lord together in our marriage always keeping god as the head of our marriage keeping god first and then submitting to one another respecting each other honoring each other Everything else is going to be able to flow because we're going to want to sit down and go, "Hey, how can I help you in this season or how can how can this situation work better?" I know there's been lots of seasons where Danny gets into this super busy pocket of time with his work and he's like, I, "I'm coming home late." And then even when I do come home, I've got to stay up late and I've got to keep working and there'll be like a month of that. And I'm like, all right, I'm on, I'm on board. How can I support you through this? That means I can't expect him to do the list of things that we have already agreed that he's going to do. Right. So it's like, all right, this is a season right now. We're going to help each other out. I'm going to help him. And then once that season's over, hey, we can go back to how we were doing life or, you know, figuring stuff all out. Right. But so it's, I hope that's helped. I hope that's helped to yeah, answer that I, question. Yeah. But mm -hmm. It's just not, marriage is not a cookie cutter. It's not a box. It's, 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 a, yeah. it's a Pandora box. <laughs> you open it up and it's, it's, it's all kinds, right? And so I, I think, I think too, to, again, to close in, in about love, um, you have one thing that we did not say. This is assuming that you pray every day. This is assuming that you mm -hmm. read the Bible every day. Because if you don't get this right, you can't get this right. 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 And so you can't just expect to get this right and not include God in your personal life with praying and, and reading the word. Right. And so with those two things, getting this right, then this will get right. Then you can go with a love chapter and experience and, and, and serve each other and love each other. Right. And so 
All that to say, there's all kinds of topics, right? But right. she will be more willing to submit to me or submit things to me, right? When I'm loving her and treating her and serving her and treating her like a princess. True. Right. right? And so, mm -hmm. you know, fill in the blank of, you know, what men want. Like, you want that, but you treat her like crap. How is she going to give you that? Right? If you expect her to be a slave and a servant in the house, how do you expect to get intimate? Right? And so, treat your wife a certain way, then she's going to want to just love you. Right? And and, 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 she, and I know she say, well, love doesn't seek your own. So, well, love doesn't seek your own. So, you still got to... No. Don't use that. Then you're using the scripture out of content. Worry about you. We tell our kids, you worry about you. <laughs> right. Don't worry about somebody else. You worry about you. You do the right thing. You do the right thing, <laughs> and then God let God deal with the rest, right? Yeah. And so if I worry about me and I love her and there's no intimacy, I got to pray and let God, you know? But when I do it right and she's doing it right and we do it right, it, everything, we're intimacy, um, you know, communication, raising kids, um, you know, whatever it is, just having fun, enjoying, things just work when you're doing it right. And it's not perfect by... Any stretch right. is not perfect, but work on some of the principles that we said, and I feel like you can get better. So, hope we answered your question. Yes, uh, it's growing. I mean, again, you know, there's people been married 40, 50 years, and they know more than us. And and this is our revelation for today. You know, pray about it. Ask the Holy Spirit on what it looks like for you guys. Uh, but th these are just some nuggets that kind of helped our marriage with seven kids. Um, you know, moving to Hawaii. You know, with right. no family, no friends out here. Now we've met a lot of great friends. And we, God, thank you for the great friends that we've met here and now growing too. But um, it's it's hard work. Just know it's hard work and it's not easy. Love is a choice. It's not a feeling. Right. Um, the minute you realize that, the easier life gets. So, aloha, mahalo, lua, which means thank you very much in Hawaiian. Hawaiian. And you got any last words? That's it. Real quick, Father, we just thank you for everyone listening to this. Um, yes. This We're sharing what you've taught us and you showed us, Father. Uh, Father, I just pray for their eyes to be open, the ears to hear what it is that you have to say, more so than what we have to say, but what you have mm -hmm. to say in this, Father. I pray for every marriage, Father, every opportunity or every um, um, person that's trying to get married or going to get married. I pray over them, Lord, that they would just start with a solid foundation. They'll start with what you have for their life, Father, your will, um, your perfect order that you beautifully just lined it out in Scripture to how do we how do we become one flesh together, Father? So, Lord, I just encourage everyone to to read Ephesians, to read the love chapter, to submit to one another, to serve each other, to love each other, and to and to and to really really focus on love. And how to live that out. So I speak a blessing over everyone who's listening to this, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that Lucy and I continue to live from glory to glory because of what you do in our lives. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Amen.